Yahoo! It's Art Chat. <laughs> Hello again. Welcome to Art Chat. I'm Lynn Chapman. And, uh, and I'm John Burks. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the artwork that we've been making over the last two or three weeks since we last spoke to you. Um, I finished off last time by talking about the Jenny Nelson online workshop that I've been doing in abstract painting um, and how useful I'd found it. And, uh, but I, I hadn't quite finished talking about all the different exercises that I've been doing. So I thought I'd start off today by talking a little bit about the final exercise that she set because I, I found that it's been really helpful actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a final, so is that the end of the course? Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there was there were five lessons, and uh, yeah, I, I managed to rattle through them in about three weeks. Uh, so they're supposed to be one a week. But I just I just found them so inspiring, yeah. and I think when when you you find that happening and you really want to work, it's such a rare thing to get that sort of surge of energy that yeah i think it's a really good idea to run with it <laughs> um, so uh yeah i just kind of went for it really um but the final exercise uh, i i've been using ever since i finished the course I've, I've been carried on using that exercise over and over again um because i just found it i found it very useful as a way of getting going because it is difficult sometimes when you're not working with reference. I don't use photographs. I have a, I have a thing actually um, called aphantasia, which I've only realised in recent years I've got, which means I don't even have visual memories. I can't see pictures in my mind when I, when I think. So I'd love to be able to paint from memory the hills in our area, you know, like in the Peak District, but I can't see them in my memory. So... I really don't have any reference to work from. I'm just in the present, making marks and responding to them, which can be quite difficult. You, it, it, I find it quite angst-ridden. Um, so it's been really useful to find somebody to give me ideas about how to get going, how to make marks one way rather than another. And the thing that is really useful is, I don't know about any other people out there, I find... When I'm not trying, I do the best work. When, I'm, when things happen randomly, it's terribly irritating, but random stuff that you do is much nicer than stuff that you work really hard to do. Then it, it has an energy to it. And so the exercise that she was teaching us at the end was a way of actually capturing that, that kind of randomness in your work. So what she got us to do was to draw from life, but contour drawing so that you're not worrying about drawing what you're drawing, you're just taking the lines from life. So just drawing stuff around the studio, kind of jars and pots and books and things, but following the lines without really looking at what I'm drawing, looking at the thing, so that you get these kind of energetic... And is that just with a pencil marks. or using, charcoal? Or? Using different, different kinds of tools. Mm -hmm. So... You want as many different kinds of lines, you want weights. So I might use um, just like a, a really fine black, um, uh, something like a, not really graphite, not something shiny, but I have like Nero pencils that are really black and, and to do really fine lines. And then you turn the paper through um, 90 degrees and then you might use an oil pastel mm. and, and do some lines and then turn it again and maybe an oil bar or a paintbrush so that you get lots of different weights of line. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when you've done that, you have this mass of shapes and lines all over the paper, which is obviously far too busy. And then what you do is you work back in and you kill off lots of the lines and find the shapes that you like. And, and it's, you know, it... It's a kind of game, it's a very difficult process deciding what you want to keep and what you don't, but it just gives you something to follow. Um, so one of the ones I've done here, I've been working on paper mostly um, because it's, it's just quicker and easier to work through smaller pieces mm -hmm. than the canvases. Um, so this is one I've done quite recently. 
Um, I'm just working on watercolour paper, so it's nice and heavy. It's it's 300 GSM, so it's the thickest stuff, yeah. uh, which really basically means it's not going to wiggle all over the place when it gets wet. Yeah, then. so it's, it's almost like card, isn't it? It, it's, 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 it's weight is like card. Yeah. yeah, so you don't have to stretch it. But I have been um, continuing with the technique I was talking about last time with taping it down so that you get this lovely crisp, white edge on it. What you... sort of tape is that? That's art, artist tape. Just artist tape. Um, unfortunately mine's brown which isn't great so I have to gesso mm. it white um, but you can get it white. So why tape. artist tape rather than masking tape? Or... It comes off more easily. Right. It, it does snag the paper a bit. You have to be careful but it's pretty good particularly on this lovely thick paper as well because mm. it's just yeah it's really firm. Um, so you can see with this painting, if I bring it up to the camera, you can see the echoes coming through the paint of some of the marks that were there at the beginning. And I really like that. I like the fact that you've got layers showing through it. It gives you depth to the thing. And what materials have you used? to create this particular piece? Well, this is this is acrylics, but there is, for instance, that red line there is oil pastel, nice and rich. And I, I do like the oil pastels because one of the things that's really fun about them is you can draw with them and then paint over them with acrylic. And because of the texture of them, the yeah. acrylic, it takes enough that if you want them covered, they'll stay covered. But if you go back in with a palette knife and just gently scrape, they'll, they'll come back. So, for instance, um, that mark in the corner, it's, it goes under the paint. I've scraped it so you get, it's not 100%. It's almost like a print kind of line that you get coming through. Yeah. So I really like that. And you can, you can get as much or as little of it through as you want. And I've, I've extended the palette. Do you remember I was talking about the unlimited palette that, that uh, we were working to on the course? I've added an extra colour. I've added the, the true red in uh, instead of just the burnt sienna, which gives me the ability to create slightly brighter pinks and gives me these kind of like pings of colour. And I've used a lot more of the red in this one. I'm trying to get a bit more variety because the limited palette if you're not careful, means that they, they do hang together as a series, but they can get a bit samey after a while. So, so I was quite excited by that one. So, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I, oh, the other thing I've been using oil pastel for is um, if over the top, particularly white oil pastel. Again, let's get in close to the camera. I don't know how much you can see. But if I find that there's an area that's just a bit too plain... Um, a, a white oil pastel over the top, you get this, it picks up the texture of the watercolour paper. So you get lovely kind of broken marks again, which is just really nice. So, so yeah, good fun. I did a big canvas as well, okay. just recently. Okay, well, let's um, see it. It's been, it's been such dingy, flipping, awful weather. I've been quite enjoying using the brighter colours. So I was trying to create a slightly brighter, more exciting. You want me to hold it for you? Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get it framed. That's, How's that? Yeah, so you, you are gone, but we can do your voice. <laughs> so again, it's using the same technique. So you can see this kind of playful kind of line that's that's winding around it. Um, I'm bringing in some much more sort of orangey colours here. Uh, yeah, re really good fun. So I would uh, encourage anybody that, is uh, having to go at abstract painting to try it out as a technique. I, th I think it's uh, right. it's really useful. And this is using acrylics? Is yeah, 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 this is still the same. Yeah. yeah, acrylics on the canvas. Yeah, this is a uh, 60 by 60 centimetres, by the way, which is, I bought a whole batch of them. And uh, I really like it as a size. It's not massive, so it's still, you know, storable and saleable for you know domestic houses it's not too big for most people's walls but it's got a bit of punch to it and i've got quite excited about square you've been working square as well haven't you? Have, quite yes. a lot yeah so actually that's quite a good uh connection <laughs> let's have a look at your squares um, yeah it, it 
is interesting, isn't it, the square format? It, it, I don't know, very different for creating composition. It is, it's, it's a completely different challenge to the standard rectangular mm. uh, landscape portrait. Yeah, uh, it's, it's sort of interesting because you, when you're dealing with a landscape piece, you often can sort of weight the composition to one side, can't you? Yes. Um, but yeah, you can't do that in the same way with the square, but it does have this wonderful, I don't know, I can't think of the word for it, but yeah, because it's, because it's contained in, in a, it, oh, I don't know, words fail me. I'm trying to find the right <laughs> word to describe that and I can't find it at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, perhaps somebody out there can actually. Um, yeah, tell me what. Yeah, say. tell us what Lynn means. Uh, <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> let's have a look at your painting, the uh, latest one. Right, painting. Uh, well, before we go on to the latest one, perhaps just very, very briefly, the one that I um, mentioned and showed to everybody uh, last. Let me time. hold it for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. It's not changed um, since I showed it last, apart from the fact that um, I got lots of nice comments and and which was which I'm very grateful for. That somebody mentioned that they they suggested that, that perhaps the the dog, which if you remember was just like a very light um, oak oakery sort of colour and very. Um, not quite there, ghostly, I suppose, would be a good way to describe it. But somebody suggested that maybe it should be a little bit more prominent and suggested blue. So I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's give it a go. So I've, I've, I have acted upon that, and that was Zora. Thank you, Zora, because I think that really works well. It, it gives a, a focal point and leads your eye into the picture yeah. far better than it did before, I think. Um, so, it's yes. a counterpoint as well. I quite like the fact that your negative space is is sort of in this kind of colour, and then you've got this little kind of piece of it that's that's opposite to the sky that works quite well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, I'm I'm that I'm calling that finished now, and I I'm, I'm very pleased with that suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Zora. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, see if Zora can help me out with this one. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the one I'm working on at the moment. So, is this finished or not finished? No, no, it's not finished. Um, I haven't I've, seen this one it's, in this form. It's gone through quite a lot of um, changes over the past couple of weeks. Um, I'm trying to combine um, some architectural inspired shapes along with um, nature inspired shapes. Uh, to try to bring the two together because I've done um, both before but not together um, so I think you're starting to get there I'm trying to make it so that your eye is dr again drawn in and through the composition uh, rather than it being a flat pan because I'm aware that it is very um, very illustrative and very surface patterned kind of design mm. um, which is fine, but I, I, I do like things to have a, th a, a 3D feel to them. So I'm trying to combine a kind of strange perspective into it, just as I did with the one that we've just looked at. Um, so again, be very grateful for any uh, reflections on this, any comments about it, um, anything that can help <laughs> improve it. <laughs> I um, think it's interesting that the things that you've done since I saw it last, are the the white lines that tie the house to the outside of the canvas i think yes. that's quite interesting because in fact all of that this wasn't here either the yeah. kind of almost like reedy effects in the bottom here and it, it did feel a bit separate yes and I agree and with now that, it's yeah. yeah now that ties both the trees to the house with these these here yeah. but also ties the house to the corner and lead your eye into the picture. So I think it, it works really nicely. And I like the fact that before you put these white lines in, the white of the windows I thought was a bit too prominent. Yes. But now they don't. Now they look right because yeah. you've got them counterbalanced. So, yeah, it's interesting. 
I always feel that one of the main challenges with composition is how to tie things together so that you don't have shapes and forms that are just floating independently and without any real connection to the other elements of the painting. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that, that there are exceptions to that and there are times when artists deliberately do that. But when it's done deliberately, you usually can tell. When it's done because you haven't actually been able to tie the elements together, I think that also is, is very obvious. And I think my challenge with this has been, and probably still is to a, to a certain extent, it has been that tying the various elements together. I knew in my mind the various stages and uh, the elements that I wanted to create. My challenge has been trying to pull them together. Yeah. And I feel as if I'm moving in the right direction there, but, but I'm not fully not fully there yet with it yeah so that's where we're at with that one i like the color palette on that yeah it's uh again it's, it's similar colors to the ones you've used before but that's, i don't know they feel jollier than they did <laughs> on the last painting i can't think of a better word yeah, for it. It pretty, pretty jolly yeah i do tend to find myself always gravitating towards oranges yeah and when i first started this one i thought right i'm going to keep away from the oranges and they crept and back slowly but surely <laughs> so i think it's just something we have to accept really yeah i love <laughs> i've always loved orange and blue together yes i remember i had a a wonderful experience in in um in budapest so many years ago in a beautiful decorated church in budapest and i was looking at the colors in the ceiling yeah and, and and I thought, thought right, I'm going to burn this in. These colours look so good together. And, and it was a, um, a lovely bricky red, a bright bricky red with a, a sort of a tealy blue yes. and a gold colour. Yeah. And together they were just divine. And, and interestingly, you've got a lot of those colours in well, here. Well, we've got a tealy sort of colour there. Yeah, and, and the kind of golden... Yeah. And and the bricky red colour. So, yeah. Right. I have to remember that in future when people ask about this, they say, oh, yes, I was inspired by a Hungarian cathedral. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. And uh, quickly, I, if you remember, last time I was showing you this piece of ceramic work, which at the time hadn't been fired. Now it has. So it... It has that oh, yeah. very different feel to it. And it's changed colour. It has changed colour. Um, it's a, f a very light coloured clay. So the area here, so the, it's that bit of shine on it, yeah. There, so it, it's, it's, it's gone white in there. It's very it? white. So why has it gone this this strange kind of mottled brown colour on those shinier areas? Right, that is the area that, if you remember, I will, I burnished with the back of a spoon. Yeah. And I think that that is basically little bits of the metal from the spoon that have been uh, forced into the clay huh. and they've created like an oxide effect on it. Really? So like, yes, yeah, so I think that's why it's, it's reddish because basically it's, it's a kind of iron oxide. Right, It's okay. a very, very small amount of it. So that now is going to be fired again, but in a, um, a pit firing outside with lots of... Um, tell, tell, tell people what pit firing is, because oh, yeah. I know, because I've been to one, but right. I'm not, I didn't before. Yeah, okay. Uh, pit firing is, is exactly as it sounds. So you, you dig a hole in the ground and you create fire, usually from um, garden waste. So, you, so you're not using coal or anything like that. You're, you're using garden waste. And then you, you, so you, you put your pots in, in amongst the fire along with other things so uh things like banana skins go over there uh copper sulfate powder salt. and then we chucked coffee grains coffee in grains that go yeah. in there as well and the idea is that then as the fire builds up the various chemicals from these organic um and uh, objects like like banana skins and other things like salt and copper sulfate as I say they they come out and burn into the surface of the clay. Mm. Uh, some produce colours, some just produce different uh, 
different shades of black and white. So and when that, you when, when you dig it out of the hole, yes, do, does it does it come out like da -da, or or is it all filthy and black? It's all filthy and black. And, black. <laughs> and, you, have, and you have to you clean have to it wash off. It. You wash it off. Now, now it's not an exact science at all. I haven't got a clue really what's what's going to come out like. Um, I doubt whether it will be very colourful because you just don't have enough control over the temperature of the firing when you do this to be able to get exact colours on it. And to be honest, for this, I don't really want it to be bright, gaudy colours. I'm hoping that it will be more like this that I did last year in a pit firing, where if I bring it closer up, oh, for it have a look at it, get it in focus, yeah, it, it becomes literally smoky. Hmm, I'll believe that. That's an effect that I really like, and I'm hoping that I'm going to get something similar onto this one. Hmm, um, really, uh, work with it. Yeah, so we, we'll see by, uh, by this time tomorrow, we should know whether it's ended up with that sort of lovely mottled effect or whether it's a thousand in a thousand pieces <laughs> why um, might it do that is that possible there is a possibility that it will not survive it, it is a risky procedure uh, is it more risky than the kiln or, or not yes it's more risky than the kiln because again you've, you've got far less control over it and also <laughs> you're actually surrounding it by other things that may be damp and if the dampness gets into the, because because this is still porous, because this has been fired to what they call um, biscuit ware, which is only about 950 degrees centigrade that it's fired to, rather than stoneware, which is 1250 degrees centigrade. So it still absorbs water, this. So if any water or mo moisture gets into it, there's always a danger that if the temperature, particularly if the temperature goes up too quickly, that that then instantly turns into like superheated steam and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but it's the nature of working in ceramics. You have to accept that risk and, uh, and try not to be too precious about it um, and not... Not have floods of tears when it comes out in pieces. Yes. I, I'm assuming it also will take out the other pots that are in there at the same time if one of them explodes. There's always a danger of that, yes. Even, yeah. even, no, that happens in kilns, even in electric kilns and gas kilns, that does yeah. occasionally happen. And again, you, I'm afraid that anyone thinking about taking up uh, pottery, ceramics work, you have, you have to be philosophical about that. That every time a piece of work goes in to be fired, um, it may not come out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it may come out, but it may come out in lots of pieces. Hmm. Um, it do, I don't, I'm not suggesting that that's something that happens regular, regularly, but it, it is something that is always a possibility. Oh. It's, so it's not for the faint-hearted and it's not for, for those who, who get very, very distressed <laughs> if they don't get a result. <laughs> Right. Um, just finally, before we finish off, I did mention um, that I've been painting over old paintings and I wanted to show you one canvas that is, is that I've, I've used. I get paintings that are nice. Get out of your way. Yeah, I don't want to knock those off. That are nice, but not nice enough. And um, they sit around and because they're nice, I don't want to paint over them until time has gone by, but then enough time goes by and you're less precious about it. Um, and so this was one that I finished very recently. Um, okay. That yeah, I think yeah, that's not bad. Uh, that is painted over the top of a painting that I've I'm put it the right way up. Yeah, <laughs> painting that I've got um, a picture of. I can show you how it used to look. Um, the only thing that is left from the original painting is if you look in the very top left hand corner here that is what you can see poking through from the original i didn't intend to paint over the whole thing 
I intended to actually leave more of the other things that I like. There's quite a lot of vigorous mark making in the original that I was quite excited by. But the trouble with painting over an old painting is you, if you're not careful, you get precious about the bits that you like. And you leave them as holes, you know, and you paint everywhere else and you leave this bit that you're really attached to. But it doesn't quite work with the rest. <laughs> and in the end, you have to go yeah. and paint over the bits that, eat, that even though they're gorgeous, they're not actually working with the rest of the painting. Well, it's interesting you should say that because although our styles are extremely different, that comes back to really what I was just talking about, that... Some, you have to be careful that a piece of the, an element of the composition doesn't link to the rest of it. Yeah, Did yeah, you? that's right. It, yeah. The, uh, so, so I feel this one works a lot better. So, uh, yeah, I'd be interested to know if you think I've uh, improved it or not. So, uh, yeah, get please again as with last time. Um, yeah, please leave comments it's it's really really interesting to hear what you've got to say yes, um, yes. about the artwork or about anything to do with the art chat thing where we're open to suggestions so so yeah do leave us comments and uh yeah hope you've enjoyed it yeah me too <laughs> okay then bye 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 <laughs>